once again descended into load shedding, hurting businesses and further undermining investor confidence, which has already been shattered by the pandemic. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss what the remedies could be. Hi, Terence. Hi, Snow. Why have we descended into load shedding again? Uh, at its very heart, it's the unreliability of, of South Africa's state-owned utility Eskom's coal fleet, which has been under maintained for many, many years, as we know. And, you know, therefore, we are always in this position of being vulnerable to load shedding. I think it did come as a bit of a surprise, given that Eskom felt confident that it could get through winter with only three days of load shedding, and we've seen that now exceeded that materially. And really, I think what it is, it's a combination of this unreliability, a lot of trips from these power units, as well as they've started the uh, reliability maintenance from the 1st of July, which means they've got certain units out uh, for protracted periods. And then we've had, obviously, this colder than expected winter, which means that the combination of these factors means that we are back into load shedding. What is ESCOM doing to try to address the problem? Well, the main focus is obviously on maintenance. During the lockdown period, the early phases of the hard lockdown, Eskom was able to accelerate some of the opportunistic maintenance, which did increase reliability. But uh, it's also now moved into the reliability maintenance phase, which means units are out for much longer than uh, when you do opportunistic maintenance. That means as we enter a higher maintenance period, as we come out of winter, we're going to remain vulnerable to load shedding, I think. Therefore, at the same time, Eskim is looking at a short-term power purchase program. Here again, unfortunately, we see there's been delays. We've had the tender out since uh, early this year. Uh, the, the, the responses have come in. We don't know how many megawatts has been offered by different industries that can offer some sort of relief. Eskim was factoring in at least 129 megawatts, which could be grid-connected or in commercial operation by the end of the year. That has now been delayed. They're now talking about uh, also allowing facilities that are able to enter before the end of February next year. They also, there was there's plans to try and mop up some of the surplus power from the existing renewable energy plants. There's about 128 megawatts there available. Um, and uh, there, there's some confusion as to whether the IPP office or the DMRE would do that negotiation or the, it falls under the uh, STPPP of ESKIMS. But uh, again, there, I think COVID has led to delays. So really, we're in a situation where uh, ESKIM needs to try and urgently get back some of the uh, units that have tripped, that they were unexpectedly tripped, uh, to try and stabilize the system. But we are going to be in a vulnerable situation because there aren't many supply side options. The only lever we can really pull as a nation at the moment, is reducing demand. How do we get out of this cycle? Well, sadly, we've known for many years how to get out of this cycle, and that is uh, to not rely on or put all our eggs in one basket, which is ESCOM. And we need to, therefore, accelerate the introduction of independent power producers, alternative generation, self-generation, both at businesses and at homes. And uh, sadly, <laughs> you know, we just have not really pulled the trigger on plans that have been in place now for many, many months. The integrated resource plan of 2019 made it clear that we had an emergency gap of about 2,000 megawatts. By December, Eskim was saying that there was about a 5,000 megawatt gap. We remember that dark day where we descended into our worst ever uh, period of load shedding in December last year. So, uh, and then we also know that the integrated resource plan says that we need to build a massive amount of new capacity and introduce new energy uh, up until 2030. Sadly, the situation we at is that the emergency pro program has not been initiated, the procurement program hasn't been started, the implementation of the uh, integrated resource plan has not been started. There has been progress uh, in the form of um, uh, minister ter ministerial determination being handed to the regulator for concurrence and the emergency program for 2,000 megawatts has been concurred with, and we need the RPP office to now initiate the procurement process. But there has still not been concurrence on the technology allocation. That's the big wind solar uh, allocation mostly, also some limited coal 
and some gas to power, uh, that concurrence process has been uh, quite slow in coming, but we hear there is progress and that by the end of this month, NERSA should finally give its concurrence. But you know, it just smacks of a lack of urgency, a lack of understanding, um, and uh, it's really frustrating for South Africans, South Africans. But at the same time, there's also opportunity to do a lot more self-generation. This needs some, a liberalization of the, uh, the, the energy markets, allowing municipalities to contract directly with IPPs, allowing municipalities to engage directly with residential customers. All these remedies are available, are off the ISKIM balance sheet, are off the national balance sheet. These are private investments that can be made. And the jobs uh, and uh, benefits are there to offer all to see. We create three times more jobs in renewable energy than in coal. So the remedies are known. Uh, they've been available for many, many years. They're becoming more and more attractive as solar and wind prices fall and as storage prices fall. And yet we have this paralysis around implementation. And until we really get our implementation into gear, we're going to remain vulnerable all the time to having our eggs in one basket that is Eskom and not uh, starting to rely on all these other levers that are available. It's maddening, it's frustrating, and South Africans are right to feel angry. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.